No. It must be Eagle Man. I've got something for you. Oh, look at those low rates. What's up, everybody? Hail to the chat. Thank you guys for tuning in. We are back with another episode of, uh, what's this show called? Uh, Sketch and Chill with Tommy and Phil. And here's Tommy. What's up, Tommy? I'm alive. Oh, I'm live. You're live, brother. Yeah, did you see, uh, so that's an old commercial from the Chicagoland area about uh, insurance. I and, did, actually, um, I did not see it because I was pulling a reference to draw the character. You heard it, though. Yeah. You, you, you can imagine what was going on. A big eagle it, on top of It's like the I was there. Yeah, it's like you were there. Um, so we'll be talking about another bird character, not Eagle Man. Big bird? Hopefully this, this doesn't this one doesn't lay eggs. He's much cooler. Um <laughs> so I thought I'd play that. So we got a lot of people in the chat. We got Keenma. What's up, Keenma? Uh Nick Greer in the chat. Uh the moral compass himself, which we'll he'll bring in, in a second. Uh Daybreak Genuine Comics will be on the show tomorrow. Randnada um uh, infinity what's up brother i tweeted this out so if you guys are on twitter go out there retweet it get some more people in here and uh if this is your first time watching where we, we bring on um an awesome creator who, who launched their their kick-ass comic book on indiegogo and uh tommy here aka the kid that's me does a, a quick little amazing art piece of that character and uh, he's going to get started here. So you see his hands. That's a, a live camera. You're seeing art being done live. No hairy palms. That's right. He's not the wolf man. I'm not a masturbator either. That's right. Uh, he's the master artist. And speaking of masters, a master fulfiller and writer, the moral compass, Mark Fulton. Yo, what's up, man? Thanks for having me. Of course, man. Yeah, another... Putting out, I mean, you keep putting out more and more books. You getting in, getting them into hands, into the readers' hands, and uh, you just keep trucking along. And I, I say this all the time. You, uh, I don't know how you do it. You're always <laughs> writing, and always putting stuff out. You're on multiple campaigns. You got this going on. Um, you also wrote Graveyard Shift Four, which is which is up right now. It was like four days left on that. Uh, which uh, Tommy and I are a part of as well. That's going awesome. And now a new IP for you, uh, a new character. This is the first time you're, you're putting out Black Owl. And uh, let's get into it because you've done U.S. Assassin, Viking Wolf, uh, Sea Dog, um, The Graveyard Shift, of course. Am I missing something? Uh, those are all the the releases, like, but I have released other things through the campaigns, like uh, there's a House of Ghosts, Ashcan, and uh, Gun Goth appeared. That's right. On. Yeah, so, so yeah, I'm always uh, always busy cranking out uh, ideas. Um, I don't know. Uh, this is like the the greatest time, I think. And yeah. I'm losing my voice. I need a drink right now. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Yeah, you know, this is. It's such a, a fertile time and so rich with, with ideas. And, and this is the good old days happening now. That's yeah. right. And we have the ability to put this stuff out. Um, and you have the ability to hire artists and, and get these books out. So you're you're building a big catalog. Like just with US Assassin, I got, you know, was it three big books now of that? Um, and yeah. Three volumes of U.S. Assassin. Uh, we're on our fourth volume of Graveyard Shift, plus right. all the supplementals. We got like seven Graveyard Shift books out there. It's incredible. Yeah. It, it's so cool. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I, I, I'm going to meet myself. So no problem. Yeah, I don't know where uh, where Mark finds the time, but uh, now new IP, uh, kind of, and you're digging into kind of an old forgotten IP too. Whether yeah. this is a public domain kind of uh would you say golden age character yeah definitely i was i was never i never realized what public domain characters were until i was like maybe 19 years old um malibu put out a series called the protectors which sure. i just thought was a cool book then i realized all these he heroes 
<laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm, I'm, I'm dying here. Uh, all these heroes sure. existed before. Somebody <laughs> in the chat get Mark a lozenge. Yeah. Hold on a sec. Let me look up. This is Malibu's The Protectors. Yeah. So they were all public domain characters that Malibu put their own spin on. And once I, I learned about this, I was just like fascinated that, with the possibilities and realized that there was other like public domain characters out there that you could choose from. Yeah. Um, but I never, I never, like I, I toyed around with the idea, but I never acted on it until uh, Greg Paulson hit me up. And I've known Greg probably, <clears throat> probably close to 20 years. Uh, he was on the, the Rob Liefeld message boards. That's how I, I met Tommy. Uh, that's how I met John Malin. That's how I met Mike McMahon. Um, yeah. We're, I, I call us, we're the Liefeld kids. And, uh, Rob needs to bring the message board back. He needs to get rid of Twitter and go back to the yeah. message boards like yeah. the good old days. Because this is the good old days, so it would make yeah. sense, right? Well, I mean, he has his Facebook page, but he kicked me out of it. <laughs> that's right. I'm sorry about that. Well, um, I'll, ask him, I'll ask later. Jeez. Damn you, Rob. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, Greg hit me up and said, hey, because um, we had toyed around with the idea of working before. It just never happened. And he hit me up out of the blue and said, hey, I'm, I, I have this idea for a, the public domain character, the Blackout. Would you be interested in, in developing it with me? And uh, my biggest fault is I can't say no to uh, to working with a good artist. So sure. <laughs> I was like, yeah, let's 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 do it. And uh, we've been working on it uh, on and off for uh for a couple of years and you know, I, I like to wait till the, the books are done before I, I launch them. Uh, the pages, uh, it's book just got finished colored. It just has to be lettered now. So we're only what, uh, 10, 11 days into the campaign and the books practically are done. So oh. <laughs> <That's awesome laughs> sorry, <here>. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that's awesome to hear. Uh, I want to get into this and uh, we'll look at the art and all that stuff, but, how? For those just joining us, Mark just did the uh, ghost pepper challenge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next, we're doing the uh, cinnamon challenge live on air. Um, so let's get into this. What is your Black Owl about? And kind of after we get into that, how does this differ from what was going on uh, in the old iterations of the character? Because we've, we're seeing this now. Uh, you know, more people diving into the public domain characters, especially in CG. You know, you got Bond doing Black Terror, of yeah. course, some other people's uh, going back and kind of reinvigorating those characters. Six Gun Gorilla was a big public domain guy, and Brian's, you know, killing it with that series, too. So uh, on, in our take, we decided that the the gold, the gold public domain Golden Age Black Gal existed, and that's that's who he was. But he had a grandson who ends up growing up uh comes like this world famous billionaire kind of a, a cross between mark cuban and i don't know tony stark and yeah. uh he, he gets framed for a crime he didn't commit goes to jail and when he gets out all that he has left to his name is his grandfather's estate he goes there to, to just get inventory of, of what he actually inherited and uh he discovers his grandfather was the golden age hero of the black owl. And that gives him the idea that, Hey, I'm going to, you know, ramp up this costume, don the mantle and try to clear my name and That's get good. back I my like fortune. That. That's really cool. It's very much like superhero legacy or yeah. I dig that. And we're not really seeing that right now, especially in CG. And that's a really cool take, you know, the, this discovery of your uh this legacy hero so are you saying that like uh in your continuity is that old public domain stuff is that canonical uh in here or are you kind of like uh, playing off of that and it's still yeah kind of like like storylines from those old issues probably won't like play a part but yeah. like all that stuff happens and mm -hmm. we're gonna honor that by like when he when he discovers his grandfather's the black owl, we flash back to to the grandfather's time, and we even have a, a different artist, Bill Douglas, doing those flashback pages, and we try to like honor the spirit of those golden age comics. They're a little little uh, simpler, hokier, but I, I don't know. They're they're just like charming 
charming as can be because it's just so much fun. I agree. And we'll get to that in a second, but uh, this art looks awesome, man. The, the colors on this, the suit, the kind of the updated, you know, battle suits. I even like his boots have the, uh, let's see if we get a shot of the boots. The talons has, on them. Like, the talons on the boots, as you can yeah. see them here. Really cool design. And then if, uh, if, if Shadow Hawk, if Shadow Hawk never got full blown AIDS, this is what he would have been. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you got babes here, tigers. And then this is the stuff that's like, whoa, this is in a new comic that you're putting out. That's pretty bad. Yeah. Kill yeah it, it, it looks awesome. Um, so uh, originally, uh, Andrew Dollhouse was our uh, colorist. Uh, yeah. Halfway through the book, uh, he got a great opportunity to be uh, to work on Spawn. So uh, oh, wow. we brought in Dexter Weeks. Dex was colorist on Viking Wolf, uh, one of my longest friends. Uh, we broke into comics together on Coney Waves. And uh, he he matched up Andrew's colors uh, as best he could. But it was Andrew's idea to uh, to color them like old school pages. And I, I just thought it was brilliant. Yeah, it is. Uh, I love this stuff. But, and we're seeing like uh, other artists do this sometimes. Pablo Romero does that kind of uh, retro 80s um kind of color tone stuff uh even with his digital art and i just mm -hmm. it gives you that throwback feel and it's perfect for uh, a flashback ind indication because yeah sometimes you have to do like the maybe the sepia tone or a, a color fade but this really drives it home what's going on with these flashbacks now who's this uh, is this an old public domain villain of his as well yep uh, that's the green mummy <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> Yeah, the the names are and characters are just so fun to to play with. So yeah, there's there's a there's other uh, public domain characters that'll pop up, and they'll they'll play bigger parts in like this little universe that I'm building. Super cool, uh, I love that stuff. And yeah, like the Green Mummy, those old character names, very on the nose uh, <laughs> most of the time. And that's Except awesome. Black Al, because he wears uh, blue and red. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is true. Uh, so what's going on in a page like this? Is this so uh, ba basically, hero? this is uh, our main character, Eric Danville. Uh, this is just sort of like a, a nutshell of who he is in uh, our world. Super famous billionaire, gets to throw out the first pitch at the World Series. He's a judge on a reality TV show. He's going mm -hmm. into space on his own private uh, ship you know, on the red carpet with all the, all the hottest ladies. So just to establish who this guy is, we did this nice little catch up page. Very cool. And now how uh, many pages is this book going to be? Uh, so 40 pages of story, then eight additional pages of uh, pinups and supplemental stuff. So 48 pages total square bound spine. Uh, there'll be a black and white version as well. Oh, cool be awesome to see yeah and i see that you have some uh i mean this shelby piece is awesome one of the the alternate covers correct yes and the cover to the black and white edition i want to uh, it's, it's such a great cover i want to get the most use out of it as possible yeah, yeah very cool killing it shelby's always killing it and there's some of the uh black and white the, artwork yep yeah, that's really cool and this is uh greg's doing this traditional yeah wow yeah we even have a few pages up for sale in the campaign Oh, beautiful. We got uh past master Dan in the chat. He says, is he black? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, no. <laughs> his suit sometimes. Uh, is, yeah. Is more modern suit. It's dark. The there suit it definitely has uh, black in it, uh, but he, he, he he's, he's a white male. There you go. <laughs> uh, I love the light effects here on his eyes. So what is... Uh, what can the black owl do? Does he have gadgets? What, yeah, he just he like he had just has this high tech uh, armor. I would say he's like a cross between Iron Man and Batman. He has the the feather like cape that helps him glide, mm -hmm. but then he has the the killer armor. It has all this tech that he you know uh, has better vision. Um, it's it's uh, bulletproof and it's uh, you know very uh it's it's functional and uh also very <laughs> protective of, of him and he can uh fly right yeah more, he more he he glides more than he flies falling with style they say yeah it's 
what they say. Yeah, more black and white pieces. Yeah, that's my favorite page in the book. Uh, another of the flashback pieces. Bill um, uh, was running out of time, so Greg actually inked that page uh, for him. Wow. And I just love the effects he did on the rain and that little homage to uh, Spider-Man No More, where he mm -hmm. throws the Black Owl costume away. Yeah, I can't wait to see this page colored with all this rain and how, how that looks in that last panel. It's going to be really cool. And great expressions. Total, like throwback stuff i'm digging it man thank you uh so this oh look at that that one's cool too and there's the talon right there you can see really yeah, so uh, that that's uh going to be the cover of our script book um greg's friend uh uh s clark hallbaker uh, i believe his name is uh drew mm -hmm. force uh he was the the artist on the nomad series from uh marvel back in the 90s which i, oh, I was yeah? a huge a fan favorite of yeah wow but yeah, the script book, um, I did a script book for the first time with U.S. Assassin. It seemed to be a popular add-on item yeah. for the campaign. So I was like, let's let's keep it going because, I mean, basically it's, you know, you'll get my script, what I, how I write. Um, it, you know, if you're, if you want to go behind the scenes and, and like when I was younger, I like I never knew how to write comic scripts. I just figured, you know, I'll write it how you know however my my artist can understand it when i started working for dc i, I realized i was sort of on the right path there was just a few things i changed so uh, i i my scripts now are written the same way dc would expect their scripts from their writers so it's, sure. it's good it's good insight for it for uh you know aspiring creators if they want to figure out how the correct way to do it is like what were you doing wrong if you don't mind me asking like what were the little tweaks that you made um so they want the the dialogue uh numbered um just so the letter knows how to place it on the on the page which i just figured i'm, I'm writing it in order anyway so yeah. i was figured yeah. <laughs> that that would be the way you place it but i don't know it's just a little thing like that and, um, and more like uh like notes for for well this is a thing i learned from from rob uh liefeld just like throwing in notes for your artist on like this is what i have usually like I, I when i started off my career i was working with an artist like way more experienced uh than i was so i, I just let him like he 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 knew what he wanted to do mm -hmm. uh with the character coney waves mm -hmm. so on these like learning from rob he would put all his notes in in the script saying hey this is this is what I'm thinking. It should be like combination Dune meets Star Wars or, or whatever. So yeah, I, I throw little notes in there. Yeah, usually my notes are like, you know, make this the most badass nineties splash page imaginable <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. Um, let's see. We got 24 eyes in the chat. Thanks for hanging out. Um, General Piggy is here. Amanda B is in the chat. What's Say up, Amanda? What's up, Amanda? Thanks for being here. Uh, looks like she's eating spaghetti. <laughs> Enjoy that spaghetti, Amanda. Her Amanda, arms I did. Heavy. Yeah, her arms are, her hands are, palms are sweaty. <laughs> uh, I went to the mall today, Amanda, and I got some boba tea. So uh, I was thinking of you during that. It was good. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, this piece, another killer pinup, man. So, uh, so that uh, I asked Greg if he would be willing to do sketches for the campaign. I told him I was. Uh, going to charge $75. Send me an example of what a $75 sketch looks like. He sent yeah. me this 11 by 17 piece. Wow. And I was like, Greg, are you sure this is <laughs> yeah. what you want to offer? Dude, and I was, was looking at the campaign and, and saw that and uh, followed him on Twitter and seeing all that. Yeah, he's uh, underselling. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, no, if someone wants to, if they're willing to add an extra $75 to their, to their backing, he goes, yeah. they'll get this level quality, 11 by 17. It, it's a commission. It's not a sketch. Yeah. Yes, totally. That's crazy. Wow. That's awesome to see. Now, uh, going forward in, in future projects and books, um, I assume you're going to keep doing more Black Owl stuff with Greg. But yep. my question is, is this going to uh, ever bleed into any other your universes? Is this in a universe on its own uh, what's going on with that yeah definitely um 
Uh, I, I love seeing my characters interact. We just did U.S. Yeah. Assassin Graveyard Shift uh, crossover. Mm -hmm. um, sea Dog and Viking Wolf are, are uh, popping up in the next volume of U.S. Assassin as well. Uh, you, you'll definitely see uh, Black Owl pop up in other books. Uh, and there's even an Easter egg in this, uh, this volume that will play important part in U.S. Assassin going forward. That's awesome. That's good to know. Everybody... Keep an eye out for that because I, I love seeing that in your work too. Even back when um, one of the supplementals for Graveyard Ship, you had uh, you know characters cross over. You know there was a U.S. Assassin um, cameo, and uh, I think was there Brutus. A Brutus? Brutus yeah, some other characters. That was really cool. Uh, that's always fun to see. Uh, all right, tell me about this. This is uh, is this an add-on or a stretch goal? Or what's going it, it's on? a it's an add-on. A uh, huge wrestling fan, uh, yeah. as I'm sure you're aware. Um, and in the '90s, WWE did uh, the wrestling buddies, which are just like pillow wrestler wrestling wrestler shaped pillows. Yeah. And uh, I was like, I found a company that could do it, and I was like, well, I, I don't know if other people will think it's cool, but I uh -huh. think it's cool. So I sort of just, I don't know, based my whole career on just doing what I thought was cool. So yeah, I, I have uh, Black Owl wrestling buddies now. <laughs> That's awesome. How big are they going to be? Uh, they're they're going to be about like, I don't know, maybe twelve inches. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, really? they're. I, I should I should have the actual physical buddies uh, soon in hand. Uh, I ordered them quite a while ago, uh, but then. If you don't want to, you know, spend too much, we have miniature ones that are uh, keychains. Oh, cool! Are, yeah. are they also the um, the same like material? Yeah. Uh, yep. Wow, that's even yeah, that's cool too. I've been thinking about doing. I've seen uh, everybody doing those like little rubber muscle men that Eric yeah. was making. That's really cool. And uh, I'm like, oh, I wonder if he could do it where it's a, a keychain, you know, so you could carry it around. So I think. For the next one, we're gonna look into doing that. That would be really fun. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to talk to the person who's doing those muscle guys to see if we could get some U.S. assassin like little I got a green, guy. little green yeah. army men. <laughs> oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, that'd be so super fun. Um, and then this, I'm sad that I missed out on this. <laughs> the first uh -huh. hundred physical backers getting the moral compass wrestling card. CG WrestleMania. This is awesome. I think more people should do this. I want to do this. We might be doing this, but uh, that would be awesome. Yeah, like uh, I, I love doing the CGWF uh, with uh, the Breaking Rad guys. Yeah. And I asked uh, Six, what, what do you think about me releasing the first official card as part of my campaign? Yeah. Uh, he was all for it. He was like, hey, I'll, I'll design it for you. Uh, this is actually like a, a throwback to the 1987 top set for WWF uh, cards. Yeah, I love it. yeah. So uh, uh, if, if other creators did this, I don't care what the book would be. I would back it just to get the, the card so I could have <laughs> yeah. a full set. <laughs> Dude. So everybody Bancroft should do it on his next one. I think yeah. it's a uh, genius. When I saw this, I'm like, Oh, we got to do this. This is so, so fun. And uh, it's even cooler than just doing like uh, a card with your own picture on it because there's so much more uh, lore in it. That's yeah. Really, really, really fun. Um, stretch goals, black owl trading card by Greg. And um, can't wait to see that. And then us assassin slash black owl team up print by Mike McMahon. That's yeah. That's, like that's actually, you can see uh, the black and white version. If you go to the updates, I posted it there. Hell yes. So we all already got the trading card coming on. Yep. And we're so close to the print. Wow, this is sick. Oh, that's a team up. Oh, that's going to be Yeah, awesome. it turned out great. Yeah, it's a cool drawing. Yeah. Black Owl and U.S. Assassin. U.S. Assassin, one of my favorite designs. I love this. The big star on there. That's really cool. Yeah, I can't wait to see Thank this you. colored up. And this is, uh, everybody's going to be getting this print once you reach 10K. Is that right? Yep. So close. If you guys are just tuning in, hanging out with Mark Poulton and uh, my boy Tommy, the kid Patterson, who's doing some awesome art uh, as we do this little uh, looking at this campaign. We do this uh, once or twice a week now. And uh, let's check in and see what uh, what the kid is up to. 
The kid's going like 15 miles an hour today. <laughs> Is that fast or slow? That's slow. <laughs> <laughs> Doing layouts, man. I've been drawing like little tiny figures. Yeah. For like, it feels like two weeks straight now because I did the, the double page spread for John. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Mark's seen that. I should email it to him, show him. Even, even I haven't seen it in Nigeria. John keeps a, such a, a I, lid on I, Tommy, I, I don't even know what you're drawing. <laughs> yeah. John keeps yeah. me in the dark. <laughs> yeah. Join the club. <laughs> yeah, but, Tom, uh, when, when you were working on the the Brahms story, I, I was messaging Mark. I'm like, dude, are you seeing these pages? And he's like, no, I didn't even know they were started. <laughs> I, I didn't even have access to Dropbox. Yeah. I came up with graveyard. Shit. So I just sneak Mark. I just sneak Mark his own book. Mark's uh, on a need to know basis. Yeah, he needs to know. <laughs> uh, let's see. We got Sim in the chat. What's up, Sim? Thanks for being here, buddy. Everybody, check out. Uh, Sim just launched uh, his Tales from the Nat Bruce two. Um, so check that out as well. But. Uh, Tommy killing it on this piece, man. And, and this this character doesn't seem like the easiest character to draw. There's a lot of detail to Bro, his costume. It's, yeah, it's all like seams and stuff. <laughs> yeah, Greg uh, already uh, said he's uh, thinking about uh, redesigning it for giving him a new <laughs> costume. Just, just destroy it at the end of this one. Yep, I'll make a new one. You can write that in. <laughs> uh, Doctor Masks Retro Elixir. What's up? Thanks for tuning in. Talking about. Black Owl, the newest haunted pizza comic, right? Yep. Uh, art from Mark and Greg. And uh, it's looking awesome. We got 20 people in the chat. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that like, subscribe. Um, we've been going up in subscribers. The channel's been growing, I think, due to some of these streams and videos that we're doing. So we really appreciate you guys hanging out, checking this stuff out. Links are in the description below. And uh, we still got a look at... That trailer. Now I haven't even watched this trailer, but I'm excited for it. Yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Red Gaze uh, did the trailer for me. Sweet. All right, let's go back up to the top. Gonna to exit out of this. I'll pay attention. Pay attention. <laughs> was awesome uh i really dig the black owl cool. logo that's really yeah cool. i was just gonna i was just gonna say the logo is really cool oh thanks uh one of greg's friends did the logo for us i i love the music in the in the trailer it, it reminds me of john carpenter meets stranger things <laughs> for sure yeah i love Arpeggiated. that arpeggiated yeah super cool um and even you know that's the thing that i like about trailers because Usually people put extra pieces of art that's not on the campaign page. So there's some stuff in there, like that silhouetted figure of just Black Owl coming down yeah. with his glowing eyes. That's some badass stuff. Um, and, you know, I always say we need, and a lot of CG fans always say there's a need of more, you know, kind of cape and cowl characters. So it seems like slowly that's coming in, you know, especially with 
guys like you are so such a prolific writer where there's a lot of genres I'm sure you want to tackle still and yeah. you have up your sleeve. Um, just like myself where it's like, oh yeah, I want to take a stab at that. I got an idea and kind of, you know, flex that area of, you know, your writing muscles there. And uh, since so people are asking for it and here it is, you know, you got your, uh, your keeping cow right here. Yeah, what I love about it, it, it is different uh, from a from a, a lot of the other books I do. Graveyard Shift, U.S. Assassin, kind of like real blood and guts uh, comics. Yeah. Um, uh, this is this is more classic superhero. Uh, more of the the books. Uh, like I'm a '90s fan, and I love like Rob Liefeld and his extreme comics is what made me want to make comics. But before that, I was reading like flash spider-man stuff like that so yeah that's more of a throwback to those uh more classic heroes yeah so you're saying that uh he's not going to teleport into a kid's body and rip it to threats <laughs> no no you have to uh to uh pick up viking wolf for that that's right that's right uh such a great costume design i agree it's really cool very striking um killing it yeah awesome trailer and let's see what you're offering because you got a few different covers on here like you said the black and white edition as well and uh if you get this featured tier it comes with this is all the covers yeah so it's uh you'll get greg's cover shelby's cover the black and white edition and the script book oh okay that's right so it's uh, basically the two books and then the script book and, and the black and white version yep. of it. and if you signed up for the mailing list you would have got a discounted version of this and saved 25 dollars Cool. So everybody check their email if they're on that mailing list. Uh, and if you have like Google, like Gmail, check your promotions folder uh, for that. Usually if you can't find it in your regular one, that's what I have to do. Um, you are doing digital, which is awesome. Wow. You have 12 claimed already. That's really good. Yeah. First time uh, doing digital, uh, basically just because international shipping is getting so crazy. And then yeah. like the whole VAT tax ID thing with uh, UK and Europe. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I don't know if I even want to do that. And then at the second, uh, last second, I, uh, <laughs> I I decided to add UK and Europe. So the, yeah. the campaign page will get a little wonky as we go down because I had to add tiers. Oh, yeah, that, that makes sense with like the international stuff. Uh, the individual covers. Yeah. And uh, did Shelby color this too? Yeah, Shelby did it all. Wow. Yeah. That's fantastic. Cool. Really good. Shelby's... Uh... He's a good. He's a good kid. He's got a future in this business. Yeah, I think he's good. Uh, make it. <laughs> yeah, he'll make it. He'll yeah, make it. He'll have no problem. So, and, like here, you see it, like EU shipping for the Paulson cover. So, yeah, uh, yeah. originally, I, I I didn't have uh, Europe on there, uh, but th that because I was worried about the VAT tax. But then I found out uh, books are exempt. Uh, I'm still still scared because what if someone inspects and says. Uh, a collectible that's a collectible it's not a yeah a book but yeah. I, I think i can fight it that uh, that whole stuff started just a little bit before we shipped out magic Cop 2 mm -hmm. we didn't have any issues with that the only thing we had was during that time australia wasn't accepting international mail yeah so we had to wait like three months to send uh this huge box that was like 80 bucks for shipping because we have a backer over there that uh, really backs heavy, gets a lot of original art mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, but we we finally got it out to him. So hopefully no vet fat stuff. Yeah, I, I've um I, I've since fulfilled uh, like U.S. Assassin three. I haven't had right. any issues, but I, it, I, I'm just a a, a worrier. So <laughs> there's always that yeah. chance with all those supply chain things going on. I feel like at some point they're going to try to recoup some of the lost money. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure um all right now, now if you could what i like about your campaigns you do the mix and match thing you know you get the the two covers what do the add-ons look like besides the extra add-ons are you able to do the, the mix and match and covers as well yeah yeah basically you can do a la carte if you want um everything's available as an add-on i mean it does make fulfilling a little more difficult because uh, yeah. but it, it's worth it just to, for sure yeah i think it's give people an, an option mm-hmm um let's see we, uh, we got uh my brother brandon in the chat that's up brandon probably. uh sim says uh book and since it's the rewards from crowdfunding it's a gift not a sale 
and keep it under 25 value and you'll avoid the VAT tax. Oh, like uh, when yeah. you write in the value. Okay. Yep. I, I do all that. <laughs> Good tip. Good tip. Uh, and look at original art plus a book, 125. That is insane for a original page. Yep. And I, wow. you will get a page with the black owl on it. Uh, there's some pages that, that uh, he doesn't appear on, but uh, we limited it to five and I picked out five good ones that he appears on so you'll, you'll get great. the main that's character a good, a good idea i already sold two of those and uh yeah that's something to look at for for creators in the future you know kind of cherry picking some really good pages that have you know your, your character on it um and kind of limiting that so it, it, you know you don't have to put everything up at once and it kind of gives that exclusivity uh so people uh really saw it and that's an in an insane price. So if you guys are collectors, I know there's a lot of original art collectors out there. This is a great campaign for it. I, I dig that. Uh, you got your kind of retailer packs here and then the fan pack. Now, what does the fan pack come with? So it's the, the four books, Greg's cover, Shelby's cover, the black and white edition, the script book, and then you get the sketch from Greg. <laughs> the 11 by 17 commission. So it's a an extra $75 from the, the four pack, uh, definitely worth it. Uh, also you can do, you can add on that $75 sketch to, if you don't want to get all four books, you could just do like Greg's cover and a sketch or whatever. Awesome. Um, oh, let's check in again with, uh, this young buck over here doing some more, uh, kick-ass wings. Look at that. Man, I don't even know if the wings operate this way, but they're getting they're getting the treatment. They will today. <laughs> yeah, that's what I love. I love seeing people's different takes on it. Just uh, like go wild on it. Yeah, that is so cool. If you guys are unfamiliar with Tommy's work, he's uh, worked with Mark a lot and uh, and John on Graveyard Shift stuff. He drew the story that I wrote for Graveyard Shift 4, which ends in, uh, what, three days, two days? Yep. Something like that. And, Thursday, um, I think. Yeah, yeah, and you're doing more, uh, more on all all of that, and uh, I, I, it was a, a treat to work with you, uh, Tommy, on that stuff. Really killer stuff. And well, and like, likewise, Phil. Appreciate it. Where's Jimmy? Where's Jimmy been? Jimmy is in the middle of uh, getting a house and moving. Why is everybody moving? I'm, dude. I'm in the middle of it too. It's uh, it keeps you busy. Hopefully, we'll be moved in by the middle of April. Stay in one place, people. Well, well, I'm never moving again. All right. We got Baz. What's up, Baz, in the chat? Will any characters like Viking Wolf or Yours Assassin be showing up this? We talked a little bit about that uh, uh, earlier, but you said there might be a, a little cameo in this book, right? So there's a th there's a little Easter egg. There's a character who makes an appearance who will be playing a major part in U.S. Assassin uh, going forward. Cool. So, yeah, there's that kind of connective tissue there with this uh this universe and didn't i see in one of the images a u.s assassin billboard yeah <laughs> uh yeah so uh that was uh one of the earliest pieces greg did and uh at one point we were talking with a publisher uh to publish black Owl, and we were going to throw like their main character on the billboard but when we decided to uh, crowdfund it instead uh greg was like hey is there anything you can put on there and so I had, uh, I used some of Mike McMahon's artwork and we made a U.S. Assassin, the movie uh, billboard. And it, it actually says, it's, it's half obscured, but it says uh, starring Michael Dudikoff. And because, <laughs> yeah, because it was based off, uh, U.S. Assassin is my love letter to American Ninja. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, I love that stuff. That's uh, Easter egg stuff is really fun. You know, yeah. uh, Sim, if you ever get any of Sim's books, he puts... Crazy amount of Easter eggs in his stuff. He just he just loves filling that. He showed me a page. Uh, he's working on s another story for someone else, and he was doing kind of like a community Easter eggs. You know, he always throws like uh, yeah. Chris Evans and stuff in the uh, in the <laughs> background. Uh, but yeah, that, that's super fun. So if you guys are into the other stuff Mark is writing, this is going to have a little connection going forward, and I'm sure we'll see. You know. Um, a crossover at some point we talked about you love doing that stuff yeah um, definitely at, at one point i want to do like a 
little mini event with all my all my properties yeah that's super fun and i mean there's so many ethan was talking about this was it yesterday uh about because jim o'reilly did this really cool crossover piece where he has like she in front of salam android i don't know if you mm -hmm. saw that on Tim twitter yeah. he's like we should do stuff like that like more people should be crossing over characters because you know, now that we've been doing this for what three or four years characters are getting established more books are coming out like you said u.s assassin is going on to the fourth uh installment you get graveyard shift four and uh fans are having their their time with these characters learning more about them and i think crossovers and stuff like that or collabs could be more could be pretty popular and really cool for the fans you know so uh i'm always down for stuff like that. yeah definitely I, I always love that type of stuff and i mean i'm just i'm just trying to uh recreate all the stuff i loved when i was <laughs> younger so yeah definitely see more crossovers from me for sure oh uh, look we got a uh, greg paulson himself artist in the chat if i was at home i'd be joining you folks i'm still at work but I'm allowed to play on the computer right now. That's good. Good to good to have you in the chat. And uh, we're loving what we're seeing in this book, man. This is really cool stuff. Yeah, I'd like to talk to him. Kind of like where his idea of kind of revitalizing this character came from. Because you said that he approached you about it, right? Yeah. Do you yeah, know if it... he had some love for, like, was he a reader of this stuff? Or he just like the outfit and thought he could revamp it. Yeah. I, I, I'm not really sure what his motivation uh, was, was for the, the doing the book, but uh, I, I can't remember if he even had any like sample artwork. I think it was just the idea. And I was intrigued yeah. by the idea uh, of doing it. Cause it's something I always in the back of my brain had thought about doing. Yeah, yeah we, ne we never really discussed what his motivations were for it. <laughs> or we talked about um, on my, my show with Brandon Friday, we do the Diaz Brothers show. And uh, it was either last week or the week before when Black Terror, you know, the Terror in the Trenches book was coming about. There's been a lot of talk of like, you know, revitalizing these public domain characters or why not just create a new character and what is the, the benefits or or uh, drawbacks of doing something like that. Uh, like with Black Terror, you could, you know, do basically the same thing and name it something different and new. Do you have any insight on, um, you know, is, is there any benefit or reason to kind of bringing that old character back into the limelight? maybe uh, revitalizing it, doing it justice because uh, people have been talking about that, you know? I mean, there's a huge public domain uh, fan base out there. There's tons of Facebook groups all that, uh, that are so into this. I mean, that's the one thing there is like a little bit of like uh, brand recognition. Like people have heard of the black owl before. Sure. Um, but as far as like, why not do your own character? This really is our own character. Greg and I, we own this version of Blackout. No one else can can do it. They could do their own version of him, but they can't do the Mark Poulton, Greg Paulson version. And I mean, I, I, I think I, I think I've created enough uh, original characters. I, I think I can just have a little fun and, and do a public domain one. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like um, like when you guys hired me to uh, write for you it was kind of freeing because you guys gave me a lot of, of freedom with what i was doing but it was like playing in your guys's sandbox you know and uh, that was really fun to you know create some stuff you know do the storyline and be playing with your guys's toys and i can see to some extent you can you have that but at the same time you know updating the character and making it your own which is a, a cool aspect, aspect. yeah it, it gave us a, a good uh having like a pre-existing material gave us a good base to build off mm -hmm. but like everything after that is is all ours and I, I think the character we could have just called him something else and he would have it would have been fine but i i like that it's a, a legacy character and i really like that it's drawn to the old version or you know mm -hmm. connected you know that's i love that startup amanda b in the chat says phil is Phil gatekeeping Greg? No, Amanda, this, uh, you messaged this at 4.14 my time, and then one minute before 
Greg said this, so I'm, I'm getting there, man. Calm down. Greg, Greg says, uh, but I wasn't happy with the characters that I was creating. I fell down a rabbit hole of public domain characters online and found Black Owl and something just kind of clicked. Yeah, I mean, I could totally see that. That makes sense. <clears throat> Brandon wanted to hear about this from a creator that was doing it. Black Owl. We got Shadow Punk in the chat. What's up, brother? Black Owl looks awesome. Thank you. It does. <clears throat> Uh, am I jealous of Greg's double G's fill? Well, people do spell my name with one L, which we uh, should fix that in the uh, graveyard of credits, Mark. No. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, a, there's a credits page. I haven't seen it, Phil. <laughs> it's, it's in the video and uh, campaign page. But oh. I know John, John does that stuff. So. Uh, Greg, and, and it would love to be on the show, but uh, evenings or during the week are the best for me. Weekends are available uh, all day and all night. Yeah, I have a weird schedule right now because everybody's leaving or like too scared to work. So I have to work for everybody. So um, it's been all over the place. So I got like afternoons now. I start work in like two hours and then I work until midnight tonight. Crikey. Same thing tomorrow. So. All right, let's see. How's it going, Tommy? Oh, we're getting there, I guess. Look at that. On the post. So how... Uh, he's got that claw, right? Yeah. How brutal does he get with the claw? Uh, not too brutal. Uh, I, I tried to keep this one more... If, if he sh I'll tell you what. If he shows up in U.S. Assassin... Or uh, Viking Wolf, <laughs> we'll, we'll see that claw, that claw put to use yeah, a lot, sure. a lot more. No, but I like, what round. <laughs> I like what you're doing here with um, you know, kind of doing different comics that you know some are more mature, others are more uh, digestible for a younger audience, more you know super heroic. This even just like your first kind of uh, pitch of it, it's like yeah, this is a superhero book, you know you know, the discovering of this suit and his, uh, the character's legacy within his family. Uh, very different from the other type of books that you're doing. Yeah, I try to I, I try to make all my books uh, different. Like uh, Graveyard Shift, I think, is more sci-fi. Viking Wolf, definitely more horror. U.S. Assassin is like shoot em up, blood and guts. And, and this is more traditional superheroes. So uh, I, I like the, the ability to play around with different genres. For sure. Now, um, is there going to be a supervillain that the new version of Black Owl is going up against? Kind of maybe something that, you know, kind of leads into another story in the future. In uh, so the villain is, is from the old Black Owl comic books, but cool. he was wasn't necessarily a, a costume villain. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Yeah. it's cool. Um, we're talking about how long it took Greg to draw the 48 pages. He says it was a few months from the day job and moving. Everybody's moving and getting married. Congrats on the on the marriage there. Lord Nemesis is in the Jack. The chat, a.k.a. Jack Napier. Uh, those, <laughs> those are smooth knuckles you got going in there. Uh, what kind of lotion do you use, Tommy? Oh, I got like a touch of uh, gout in my hand right now. You can compare the two. Oh, you got yeah. The gout? Are they going to cut your hand off? Nah, dude. I just stress eating cupcakes while we're moving. So <laughs> back on the diet today, I had salad and all that stuff. So it'll be cleared up in a couple days. Yeah, I think I'm going to get a chick. It looks like I got a bee sting. It does. Look at that. Shiny, though. I'm still drawing, though, dude. Powering through. I don't, I don't right. want John coming after me, whooping me. <laughs> the kid. The kid's at it. Um, yeah. That's looking great, dude. So anything Thanks. else that uh, you want to talk about? You know, we're super close, like you said, to that next stretch goal, which is going to be that, that awesome crossover print. Yeah, uh, just, uh, yeah, we're almost close to unlocking the Mike McMahon uh, U.S. Assassin Black Owl uh, print. Uh, some of the other stretch goals we have in mind is a Golden Age uh, Black Owl trading card done by Bill Douglas. Uh, I have uh, my buddy Cowboy Phil from uh, 
the pod gods doing a uh, cross golden age, modern age, black gal print as well. Um, and just like I said, he's going to be a part of this little universe I'm building. He's going to pop eventually pop up in other books. Um, and it's, it's, I just want to thank everyone for, for supporting the book, supporting all my books. Graveyard shift is uh, about to, to wind up. And uh, that's another, it's been another great campaign for us. So, you know, you were saying yeah, I'm always, you know, making fulfilling books. I'm only doing it because people have been so supportive and made this the, the best time of my career. Um, 10, 10 years ago, I was working for DC and I thought, oh, this is the best my career will, will ever get. And I mm -hmm. lost that job. And I was like, well, you know, I'll just go back to doing indie comics and, you know, maybe I'll break even and I'll consider it a, a success. Well, everyone yeah. in, in Comics Gate has made like this the best time of my career. I get to do call my own shots, do whatever I want. Um, and I'm just I'm, I'm living my dream. So thank you to everyone. Yeah, dude, I, I feel the same way. This is the best time to be making comics, the best place to be making comics. Uh, it's awesome. There's no other place where I could you know, hit you up. And you have your years of experience or, or anyone else uh, for advice. And uh, it's just, it's so cool. And guys, definitely get on over here. Back this book. Uh, the, the sooner you back it, the better. If you can't back right now, definitely go over here and hit this follow button. Uh, it'll turn red, the heart will turn red, and then you'll get any update that Mark puts out. So it'll be like a little reminder to grab it. And uh, this is looking awesome. You know, I feel when people get this book, they're going to get it in the mail. They're going to look at it and they're just going to say this. Wow, this is really cool. <laughs> and that's uh, that's his eight comics approval right there. Black Owl, guys. Grab it today. Uh, and you also have... Of course, Graveyard Shift, which is is killing it. He's got two days left. Graveyard Shift 4. You could get uh, the previous books on this campaign. You got some new amazing art from Jose Garcia. Uh, fully colored. Look at that. That's so cool. Yeah, I, I, I want to say this. You know, the campaign's doing great. But I have a feeling when people get their book, and the word of mouth spreads on this volume, which in my opinion, I consider it the best volume of Graveyard Shift. Yeah. Um, I, I think the demand for volume five will be even uh, greater because people are who missed out on four are going to be kicking themselves that they missed out on this. We're introducing so many new characters and, and they're not, in my opinion, they're not throwaway characters. I think these guys could like Death Rider right there coming out of the flames. Yeah, he, he, he could he could carry his own book. Uh, Division X could carry his own book. Brom could carry his own book. In fact, he is carrying the supplemental book uh, with the story by you. Um, yeah, so fun. These are like big time characters we're creating. Uh, if like people who got supplemental book one, that was the first appearance of Killer 99. He's now a huge part of Graveyard Shift, the Graveyard Shift series going forward. Um, it's not just the, the, the you know, the core for Graveyard Shift members. It's all the, we're expanding the universe, creating all these new heroes and, and villains. It's a, uh, this is, this is a, a big, big volume. You don't want to miss out on it. Yeah, this is going to be awesome. I had such a blast writing the uh, the Brahm story and uh, I think it stands on its own. I think it stands up to hey, go full screen. I'm gonna get here. I'm gonna get fired by John. Go full screen real quick. Go full screen? <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show a little peek of that double page spread I'm working on. You can uh, you get fired. Dude, I, mean, I don't care, John. Fire me. I dare <laughs> you. I dare you. I don't want to have to take this stream down. All right. All right. All right. Phil scared. Plus, we're talking about Brom here, okay? He's scared. This Brom's is on the double. Brom's on the double, bro. Yeah, but people are going to be able to get this really soon. Look at this cover. Uh, I think this stands up against anything coming out right now. Uh, the art is kick-ass. And uh, 48 pages, full story, and I'm super proud of it. I, I, thanks so much, Mark, for giving me the opportunity to, to do this. Yeah, so, no, it turned out fantastic. Thanks, man. Yeah, I can't wait to see it in print. 
So head on over, check this out. I think uh, they're doing a, a closeout Thursday night. Uh, I wish John would have us all on a stream together uh, to talk about this, um, but he won't for some reason. Uh, <laughs> so uh, grab the this. stream's a little too late for me. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Hey, you and me both, brother. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then, of course, the Lost Pages 2 guys, we are getting ready to put books into boxes this weekend. Fulfillment Phil is coming back. If you guys back this, you won't be waiting long um, until you have it in the mail. And if you haven't, definitely come over and grab it because I want you guys to check this out. We just got the the, the main books in. And look at this. Look at this cover. We got the back cover here. And the gold foil came out beautifully. Man, that looks incredible. Dude, it is insane. I could not even imagine that it would look this good because we've never done anything like this before. But my brother set up the file with, uh, you know, the, the spotting of it and it's raised. You could feel the difference in it. It's like a metallic ink that they used. Uh, and That's awesome. A local wait. print shop went out of business and they were the only one in the area that did the foil embossing. Yeah. And I bet they were selling that equipment for cheap because it was a guy doing it out of his garage. Yeah, wow. <laughs> this is awesome. You could it's see the reflection of you in yeah. the in the jaw. It's I like so the cool. way it catches in the eye, like yeah. a split second later. Yeah, it's so cool. Oh, uh, and a thick book. I think it's 70, 76 pages of story. Thick. And the colors came out awesome. Here's that. Matt Dalton Grimstone page. Nice. Ripping those guys apart. Oh, I, I can't wait for people to get their hands on this, read through this. It's so cool. It's it's I think it's the best, highest quality book we put out yet. There's some silhouette action. And uh they're all ready. We're just waiting on the ash can. So if you guys haven't yet and you want something to read soon, back this now. You guys will have it in a, in a few weeks. We'll get those out to you. Awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, guys, remember, spread the word about Black Owl. Just launched. Uh, the, the the more backers he can get in on earlier, the better it's going to be. Um, so he's going to know how many books to print out. And like you said, this book is basically done, right? Yeah, it just has to be lettered. Um, so once the once uh, campaign ends, going straight to the printer, another fast turnaround for us. That's going to be awesome. Uh, you know, putting those books out and what's going on, uh, this year with, with you, Mark, you got black owl. I know there's going to be some more stuff coming. What do you got in store for us? Yeah. So people, people will be getting graveyard shift for black owl, uh, the next, uh, U S assassin campaign. That'll be my next thing. Uh, it won't be volume four. It's going to be, we're going to do a hardcover, uh, edition of, oh. uh, of, uh, U.S. Assassin versus Graveyard Shift expanded. It's the Ultimate Edition. That'll be next. Then uh, a book that I've been working on forever. My artist has been so patient. Loose Threads. Uh, that's a self-contained graphic novel. That'll be after that. And then I don't know that I have a ton of projects in the works. It's just who, whoever com completes first. <laughs> that'll yeah. be the next. That'll be the campaign afterwards. But of course, there's uh, more Viking Wolf. I'm relaunching uh, the book that started my career, Coney Waves. And uh, uh, I'm coming up with some new characters as well that uh, hopefully you'll start seeing print soon too. That's exciting, man. Always doing this stuff big. Uh, we're going to be getting Lost Pages 2 out. And then we have a big super secret CG project that we're doing um, that I think people are going to be blown away by. Hopefully... People dig it, putting a lot of work into that right now. And uh, it's a lot of juggling, but I think if anyone's going to do it, I think we're the guys that are going to be able to, to do it because we've juggled a lot of artists on these uh, Lost Pages books. Yeah. So I, I think it's going to be really fun. Uh, uh, one thing I did forget, I'm, I also uh, I did some uh, work for hire. I wrote a uh, godlike story for uh, John Malin. Oh, yeah. uh, that'll be part of a supplemental book. And I did one for... Uh, for Eric Ninotowski, uh, I, I wrote the origin for Hopscotch. Oh, what a cool character. Yeah. He's got an awesome design. 
that's exciting. And yeah. uh, Eric and Clayton are doing the artwork for that uh, book, so it'll, it'll look incredible. Nice. That's going to be crazy. Yeah. Uh, really excited for all this stuff coming out uh, from you, Mark, as always. Thank uh, you. Let's see. Tom, are you done yet? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, you can just end, just end it, bro. Before I Let's show get... that double page spread. <laughs> yeah, don't don't show that. <laughs> don't don't get fired. I can't I can't help myself. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you guys. We have an I had an awesome audience tonight. We have Muttman was here. What's up, brother? Thanks for being here. Uh, tune in tomorrow. We'll be having Dave Brink of Genuine Comics on talking about Perfect Ten uh, around the same time. That's gonna be awesome. And uh, like I said, if you guys haven't yet, hit that subscribe button and um, we will see you guys later. Spread the word about these books, grab them. And uh, it, Mark's stuff is awesome because it's already done and you won't have to wait, you know, uh, you know, seven months uh, to get this. So uh, until next time, guys, always remember. But don't you forget, you're my number one customer. <laughs> and we will see you guys. Uh, We'll see you guys later. Awesome. Awesome to the max.